All right, we've talked about an MWM for the shoulder, Brian, and we've talked about also treating the spine to affect pain in this area as well. Sometimes we find that we might need to do a mobilization on the spine while we have the patient move their arm. If, they've got, if someone's got pain when they move their arm and, and you've tried some stuff out here more distally on the glenohumeral joint or maybe on the scapula and they still have a problem and it may be of spinal origin, so perhaps we need to do a, a mobilization on the spine while they move their arm. A reposition. Yes. Yep. So if you've got someone with upper arm pain or shoulder pain and you think it's of spinal origin, perhaps a transverse glide on the spinous, or on the spinous process of the level indicated can be of value. So if they have an area of C4 that's irritated uh, or painful, you might want to do a transverse glide on C3 to affect the C3-4 uh, joint and affect the, the neural opening there where the, where the C4 root comes out. Uh, if it's further down in C5, you may want to go down a level or C6, uh, et cetera. So if, if, say, they've got an issue up high, um, I may want to push C3 or C4 over. So I can take my, the, my thumb here, and I can use the side edge of my thumb, and I'm going to come across midline with it, and I'm going to capture the spinous process. Um, I'm going to do a transverse glide away from the bad side. Taking our thumb across midline, we're going to come right down into, right up to that articular pillar, through the soft tissue, and we're going to affect a glide transversely on that spinous process. And I could reinforce it with my other finger, and you can see what's happening here, folks. So we're going to get a little gapping there, or a little change in the neural you foraminal can opening. Finger, right? I'll see it. You can see if I did a transverse glide on that joint, oh, and this isn't how you're going to put your hands on the person, but, but just so you can see that sure, gapping that maneuver there, too. right there. So if I got my thumb in there, and I did a glide across, you can see what's happening there at that joint level. All right. Yes. And it's a very subtle repositioning, but it can make a big difference in those sensitive neural structures in terms of the symptoms you, you see uh, going down the arm. While I sustain that glide, I'm going to have them go ahead and do their provocative motion. If it's shoulder elevation or shoulder adduction, or in some cases you might see some folks with a neural tension type of maneuver. They may have symptoms when they do a, a maneuver that tensions the median nerve or the radial nerve or even the ulnar distribution. You can use those maneuvers with this combined to see if you can abolish that symptom down into their extremity. And if you can, then you're in business. So we'd like to take a look at that on a real subject and go over the finer points of that with you, Brian. Spinal mobilizations with arm movement. I'm going to let you into a secret. If I have a patient come to me and they've got painful arm movement, um, the first thing I would do before I even look at the shoulder or the shoulder girdle is to do a spinal mobilizations with arm movement. I reposition what I consider to be the appropriate segment and see if that instantly removes the arm pain. And, uh, so this could be one of your clearing techniques for yes, the cervical spine. That's right. It, it, it means that if I clear that pain as they move the arm, it's a cervical problem and not an arm. And, I had to speak earlier this year to a group of 18 medical specialists and that came about because a patient who was a physical therapist was going to have shoulder surgery because the MRIs showed she had a degenerative rotator cuff and she had had 9, 10, 11 months of therapy with her colleagues and she'd had injections, the whole lot, and she comes out uh, when I was teaching in Palmerston, sits on a chair and I said, what hurts? And she said, oh, a painful arc. Full flexion, pain. So I said, right, the pain's here. That's the fifth nerve. I went straight to C4, moved it across. She was pain-free. And the, the doctor present was absolutely amazed. She did not have surgery, and we taught her to treat herself, and she was better almost immediately. So what did we do? First of all, if it's C4, you're going to move across. Remember the spinous process slopes. And remember, if you use the pulpy part of your thumb, it's too big to pick up one single spinous process. So you turn your thumb over and locate on the appropriate vertebrae, on the appropriate spinous process. I go forward as far as I can to get into the root of that, that spinous process. If you come out already, as Brian has said, that's horrible. But get into the root and don't use your thumb. It, it, it gets tired. Push 
that spinous process across using your index finger. Now already we've got a that's better. Keep the head straight as you do it. Yeah, nice first posture. Yep. Yep. Now I've moved that across. Now I would ask the patient to lift their arm. If this is indicated, they have no pain. It could be some of the movements that, that delve into and check the integrity of the nerves. And you can you can use those. But that's the correction, that's the movement. And if there's someone around, overpressure, which is important. But the other thing is that the patients can do this themselves. So, Ed has never done this before. He takes his middle finger and he locates on C4. And I will often put a little bit of tape there. So when they go home, they can see where to put their finger. He locates, he puts the heel of his hand there. He keeps his head up straight. He pulls across just with that finger. And do this while they've still got some symptoms left. Don't clear all their symptoms and try because you won't know if they're doing it correctly. So if they've still got some symptoms, they correct, they move their arm and say, hey, that's better. You say, of course, and regularly during the day, they will do half a dozen of these if they have any signs or symptoms. And you'll find that within a day or two, they're heaps better. So Brian, when you're doing a, a, a neural a, 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 a glide here on the spine and you potentially have neural tension issues, do you... Do you have considerations about their irritability level and number of repetitions you'd want to do the first, first time you try it, or where do you I, go with that? Well, I, I would try half a dozen times. Remember that every time you do it, there's no discomfort. So you should not upset this person. Mm -hmm. I've never made anyone worse using this technique. When you reposition transversely the spinous process of, say, C4 with arm movement, and the arm does move, can you just move slowly just for a minute, when the shoulder girdle starts to move, the muscles that are attached to the vertebral border of the scapula and going up to the spinous processes start pulling the spinous processes laterally to the side of the moving arm. And while I'm moving one transverse process, the spinous process one way, the one below is moving the other because of that arm function. Brian, it's interesting that you point that out, and the viewer may certainly be uh, asking themselves, well, does he have any evidence for what he's saying? In uh, Spine of 2008, and I think the viewer knows that that's a very prestigious uh, peer-reviewed magazine, uh, Toby Hall and his co-authors looked at what happens when the individual raises their arm to 90 degrees and through imaging they have conclusively shown that indeed the spine does rotate. So when you go from 70, 90, yes. and 120, you can expect rotation. Yep. So if you don't have motion here, then maybe that's a restriction and a reason why you're not getting the movement. Yep. 